This is the glue jig system, which is used to glue and clamp multi layers of thin veneers or laminate boards to produce larger laminate boards for various projects. I've used this system over the years on many projects, starting with producing laminate boards for some of my segmented wood tying projects. And I began this by selecting a variety of thin veneers, gluing them together in a pattern to produce these laminate strips. I then put these on my AccuWedge system, cut out my thin wedges, and I produce these segmented discs. And from these discs, I produce my segmented eggs and also a number of bowls. I've also used this for other projects, such as making my dizzy bowls, which is probably the biggest project I use it for. In this case, I cut a bunch of thin veneers, glue them together, produce these thicker laminate boards. And then from this, I cut out my disc and make my dizzy bowl projects. I've also used for other projects, such as producing knife handles, which I cut some thin veneer strips and cut them at an angle and gave me some unique knife handles. Another project I did, I made some uh, thin inlay strips for making furniture. And in a recent project, I made some thin veneer strips for doing guitar bandings and perflings. Very thin, fine strips that can be used on the edges of your guitars. The videos which describe the use of the glue jig are listed in the description section of this video. So I've used it for a number of projects over the years. The system began initially with just taking two angle irons and I uh, glued up my boards. I put a bunch of laminate boards together, glued them and capped them between these two angle irons. The system worked pretty good, but the problem was eventually a lot of the angles began to slip and slide and end up getting a slight angle, which meant, meant I didn't have parallel sides and edges on my laminate boards. So I took it to the next step and I took these two angle irons and I mounted to some rails. And this first strip is actually permanently mounted to the rail. And the second strip slides on brass keys in these rails. And so this rail now does not tilt. As a result, I can put my laminate boards in here, glue them, clamp them, and then tighten up my clamps. And these uh, rails will stay nice and parallel. They won't get, you know, uh, tilted side. So I get nice straight uh, laminate boards. We provided the glue jig system for a number of years as advertised on our website. In order to reduce the cost of the glue jig system to our customers, we decided to come up with a glue jig kit. This kit consists of five 12 inch long rails, two 36 inch long two by two inch aluminum angle irons with pre-drilled holes for mounting, and a packet of hardware. This packet of hardware cont contains all the screws and nuts and bolts you need to assemble the system, plus two brass keys and two thumb screws. So it's a complete package to assemble the system. What's not included is the MDF sheet. By not providing the MDF sheet, which is heavy and costly to ship, and by us not doing the assembly, we're able to reduce the cost, and we're passing this cost savings on to our customers. This video will describe how we assemble the system, uh, so you can use it as a guideline. If you buy a kit, you can do your assembly of the system yourself, or you can modify the instructions to meet your own needs, or maybe you know a better way to assemble the system. And you need to start with a piece of MDF, and this MDF is 12 inches wide by 36 inches long. And it's 3 quarter inch thick. I prefer to 3 quarter inch thick for this project. Uh, so I just said this MDF sheet is not included in the kit, so you need to cut this yourself. So the first thing to do is to start mounting these rails. And I've actually made some jigs to do this. This first jig is just another piece of MDF and it's 26 and 3 quarter inches long and the sides are perfectly perpendicular to the edges and it's actually it's 12 inches wide the exact width of my board so what I normally do is make sure I get my front edge you know flat against the MDF board and I'll put two rails on here and center in the system and it should be about a little over two inches on each side and that's centered and then I usually get my front edge flush against the front edge of my MDF board. And then I clamp it in place using either uh, C clamps or parallel clamps just to keep it from moving. And 
And I get my packet of hardware. And there's two bags in here. One containing these carriage bolts. There should be 10 carriage bolts. And the other packet containing uh, some washers and nuts. And all the hardware for this project are quarter inch, 20 thread per inch screws. So both, you know, the, the uh, carriage bolts and the other screws are all the same, quarter inch, 20 threads per inch. I use carriage bolts, but you could use other bolts if you wanted to substitute other bolts. So I have my pattern here, which is set 26 and 3 quarter inches long. I have my first rail, and I push it tight against the MDF board. Get it flush, front and back on the MDF board, and then drill a quarter inch hole using the hole in the rail as a guide. And then I usually take one of my screws and put it in the hole just so it doesn't slip while I drill the other hole. And this board is, I have a two inch or two by six board underneath to keep it off my tabletop. And then I go and push it tight against the pattern and drill the second hole. And then do the same thing on the other side. Again, keep it flush front and back against the MDF board pattern. And make sure you drill your holes you know, straight perpendicular. And put a screw in there just to keep everything aligned so it doesn't move. And drill your second hole. And I usually take that out, both of them out. And on the back side, uh, there's, you know, where the drill went through, it, it bubbles out a little bit. So I just take a, a I'm just using a countersink to clean the back side of the drilled holes. And I put four of my carriage bolts in there. And these are carriage bolts which have a square shoulder on the top. So you just take a hammer and just tap them in. That keeps them from twisting as you're taking the screws. back on and then put a washer on each of those screws and then put some uh, nuts on the screws. Now these nuts are a pretty tight fit in the channel on this rail but they do fit. In order for these to fit I did use a this is a 916th uh, driver, and it's a very thin one. A normal driver doesn't fit, but this does fit in there to get them started. So you can tighten it with this. Or I've also modified one of my drivers to give me a narrow driver, and I use that to tighten them up usually. If you have strong hands, you can tighten it up with, you know, this screw, but this is just much easier. I can get it much tighter. So that's the first two rails installed. As I said, they're 26 and 3 quarter inches apart. And that spacing, that spacing is important because that's what the spacing is on the holes pre-drilled in the angle irons. You could drill other holes if you wanted to to change it. That's all that jig is used for. Just I said it's a piece of MDF, 26 and 3 quarter inches long. And I have another spacer, and this one is 4.5 inches wide. And again, that's used to align the second rail. The same process. I take my spacer board or mat, we should call it a pattern, clamp it in place. And use the same process to glue the third railing. Pre drill the holes. I, so I do like to put these screws in there because the thing doesn't slip. You want to make sure you're pretty accurate on your second hole. And same thing, clean up those holes on the back. 
These are two carriage bolts. Tap them in place. Attach the rail. Two washers. And two nuts. Two nuts. So you could change this process if you want. You could use, you know, uh, some pan heads type screws. You can maybe even use wood screws with maybe some inserts. So there's other things you can do besides using these screws. And repeat the process for the next rail. You just move this over. Or this uh, pattern is four and a half inches. So that's the distance between each of the rails, four and a half inches. process for the last rail. That completes the installation of the, of the rails. I said I had one pattern which is 26 and a half inches between these two rails and then four and a half between each of these. Now this one's a different spacing but these three are all four and a half. So next we have to mount our first angle iron. And that's another packet of screws. There's five quarter 20 thread per inch hex head bolts and just center your angle iron on the board and then put the uh, hex head screw in the slot in the appropriate channel where it lines up with the bolt hole in the rail. So I usually put the bolts in and push them up against the rail. Okay, that gets them all in a straight line, which makes it much easier to install this rail. So once they're in a straight line, then I can just take my rail, pull one in, and slowly drop it in each of the bolts. And then again, one washer in each of those screws. And one nut on each of the bolts. And I usually line this angle iron with this front edge close to the front edge of the board. So I have this full length for doing my clamping. 
and then just tighten up the bolts. These bolts can always be removed and readjust the rail in the future. And you don't need over tighten these, just tighten them up slightly enough that they hold the rail in place. Okay, next in the packet are two brass keys and two thumb screws. I usually don't put these brass keys in the outer rails. I usually put them, you know, in the inner rails. Because the further out they are, the harder they are to keep everything parallel as you're pushing it in. So they're pretty tight fitting. And these brass keys are very tight fitting on these slots. You know, if you want to, you can put, you can sand these down a little bit, give you a little more play. But I actually prefer them a little bit, a little bit uh, tighter. So I normally don't uh, sand them down, but you can if you want, just you can take these and put them on some sandpaper or just sander and sand them down a little bit to reduce the height uh, to make them a little bit looser fitting. So I just slide these brass keys in the appropriate slot. Line them up with the holes in the rail and insert your thumb screws. And this rail can be slid back and forth, lock in place. You have some strips you want to glue up, you just place them in between there. Tighten them up like this. Tighten these up. And I usually tighten these up enough, not that they're real tight, but just so that it doesn't rock. So you want to prevent this front, front rail from rocking 